Hey there folks, Lenny Rudo here for Boat US Magazine. Now, you may be looking at the screen right now going, wait a minute, why doesn't this boat have a steering wheel? Because this is a tiller steer rig. Now, tiller steers seem a little odd to a lot of people, mostly because everyone's just accustomed to steering vehicles with wheels. But it actually has a lot of advantages. Chief among them, a much faster response to input from the captain at the helm. Now this boat is my crabbing skiff. Yeah, I'm ready to scoop up some crabs. Now, I could have easily put in a console and a wheel here, but that would have been a mistake because the boat would have become much less maneuverable. Plus, tiller steers tend to be a lot less expensive. You eliminate all those cables and controls. You'll need all that stuff. On top of all that, eliminating all that stuff opens up a ton of room in the boat. But running a tiller steer boat does take some getting used to. Let's look at a few of the finer points. First things first, you'll need to locate the engine cutoff switch, or ECOS. Now, on most tiller steers, that's located up near the engine somewhere. On this boat, it's right here. Shifting into and out of reverse is naturally a little different. Most motors will have some sort of lever or arm. On this motor, it's right here. You just push it forward to go into forward gear, back to neutral, and backwards to go into reverse gear. This is the one thing that confuses most folks about a tiller steer. We're gonna go into forward here. Steering can be a little bit confusing because you actually wanna push the tiller arm in the opposite direction you want the boat to go. So if I want the boat to turn to starboard, I'll shove the tiller arm to port. If I want the boat to go to port, I'll shove the tiller arm back to starboard. Hopefully, people, you could see exactly what I was talking about right there in that little demo. The response you get when steering with a tiller is instantaneous. If this boat had a steering wheel, I couldn't move it around like this, and this is at idle speed. You also do have to be careful about how you shove that tiller arm on some boats because the response is instantaneous. It's easy to oversteer. The throttle can be a little different on different tiller steers, but most of them, you just rotate the tiller itself to open up the throttle and rotate in the opposite direction to go back to idle. This little lever down here is important to know about. It's a tensioner, some people call it the co-pilot, and you slide it back and forth to increase or reduce the amount of tension it takes to swing the tiller on. You can set it wherever you're comfortable with, but it's usually good to have at least a little bit of friction in there to prevent oversteering. I do want to mention, folks, that this rig actually has a tiller extension handle on it. Uh, right out of the factory, this motor, the, the tiller handle would end right here. I put this on because I use this boat for crabbing, and often I need to turn this way and steer like this, so I really needed that extra bit of reach. In most cases, you won't need one. It really depends on how the boat's organized and where the seats are. Uh, but just so you know, this is an extended tiller handle that you're seeing here. Tiller steers are great for tenders, dinghies, lots of small boats. Not only do they work well and make that handling excellent, they're just downright fun. Yes, it's true, running a tiller steer boat will take a little bit of getting used to if you've always used a steering wheel, but there are a lot of advantages to it. We hope this video has helped to make that clear. And don't forget, leave your comments below and click on the button to subscribe to the Boat US YouTube channel.